In this video, I'm going to walk you through Act 2 of Baldur's Gate 3 and go step by step to every single unique item. Unique being any item that has a set location. And there are very, very many items as you can see here. There's tons of blues, greens, purples, and even a couple legendaries thrown in there. So if I do miss any, please let me know. I don't think I did, but of course there's a million paths you can take in this game so sometimes there's just some really hidden stuff so let me know and then I'll do like a patch video down below and with that said leave it a like if you find it helpful subscribe for more guides and let's get started and for those of you that are following along with me I'm gonna go to act two through the mountain pass in the top left near Joaquin's rest just right here first up right off the bat here in act two I came in through the top side, the mountain pass side, and I began right here at the Trialta Crags. There is the vendor Lady Esther here, and she has a ton of unique items on her. The first one is the Periapt of Wound Closure. The next one is the Gloves of Cinder and Sizzle. The Graceful Cloth. Cacophony. Gloves of Baneful Striking. Boots of Elemental Momentum. And Hoppy. And if you decide to kill her, you can get all those items for free. But you might not want to do that because I believe she has a quest line. Next up we have several ceremonial weapons as well as a piece to a legendary weapon that we'll get later. So go ahead and come to the Rosemorn Monastery up here. And then I went in through the ropes here and then broke the wall and came through. And I'm going to go back this way. Here we go. If you go back in here, you'll notice a weapon here. We need to put a weapon on each one of these pedestals, and that will unlock something here. So we will go ahead and do that. If you have good enough perception and, and are able to pass a 30 lockpick, 30 DC, you can go ahead and try. But the first thing you need to do is come here and open this door. And we will fight the guy inside and he's going to drop us the first weapon. There it is, already on the ground. And that's how you get that one. Next up we have the Ceremonial Warhammer. And I'm in the same place as I was just at, looting the Battle Axe. And you just head right out and climb these vines. And you'll need to steal it from this bird or kill the bird and take it. I'm going to go ahead and kill the bird because I want the XP. And after that bird is dead, you can pick up the Ceremonial Warhammer right here. And then right after you kill those birds or don't kill them and get the mace, you can actually go right over here, jump down to where Lizel is, and then head over here. Jump over here and you can get the Holy Lance Helm. And now if you want to get the final one, the Ceremonial Mace, you can head back near this and go through here out through here and then come through here and then you'll need to kill a bunch of kobolds which I've already done so let me go ahead and head over here On my way. and you can actually find the mace on one of the bodies right here And now that we have all of the ceremonial pieces to place on the pedestals, you can put the axe here. At the, ready. the mace.
mace right here. And the hammer right here. And that will unlock this. Again, you could have passed a perception check and then lock picked it for a 30 DC, so it's really hard. And then pick up the Dawn Master's Crest because you'll need that for a legendary weapon. And now that we have the crest piece, I figured I'd show you the path that I need to take to get to the next area. So go ahead and go down these vines. And then I went, actually I went around and used Featherfall and jumped down into this room. But I assume the key you got from the other room would open this door. But if you don't have the key, you can use Featherfall and jump over there. Go ahead and go into this door here. I recommend having Lizel in your party for this, so she can talk to the Gith. Eager for battle. Repositioning. I expected no visitors. We allow Lizel. Be calm, Rastil. Those standing in truth need not fear Vlakith's gaze. And the waypoint is just sitting right over here. I heard they're making us join the patrol soon. The search must be going back. Permitted to walk so freely. And then right nearby the waypoint of Crash Hillek, you can actually just open the door and there's a vendor standing right over here. Back for more. And this vendor has the gloves of dexterity. The Knife of the Undermountain King. The Daredevil Gloves. Vital Conduit Boots. Defender Flail. Larethian's Wrath. Unseen Menace. Witch Breaker. If you want the crossbow of arcane force or the amulet of branding, you'll need to come to the Crash Hillek down this way. And you can kill the guards, the Raider Grath, and the the vendor over here. So this is how you get the crossbow of arcane force. Lizel will come down here and pick up the other one. Ow. My injuries need tending. And here is the amulet of branding. Don't worry about those other two items, that's just stuff I sold to her. And we have Ring of Arcane Synergy. And to get that one, you can actually get it from one of the people where you first enter the Krashulek area. You need to kill them to get the ring or knock them out, but you can see it right here. And eventually you'll need to kill these people anyway, you might as well do it. Next up we have the Ring of Elemental Infusion, and you can get it here in the infirmary part of Crush Yelek. And to get it you'll have to kill Gish Umrak, or however you say that. And that's the only way you can get it, you can't get it from pickpocketing, so I'm going to go ahead and kill it and then show it to you. And I just attacked as well. That's okay. And there's the ring right there. Next up we have the Aberration Hunter's Amulet. And it's in the Kresh Yelek area. Over here in the infirmary we need to go talk to Gastil Sternagoss. And you need to go ahead and progress this little story bit however you choose to do so. Go to the safest. And I'll go ahead and skip all this story because there's quite a bit of dialogue here. Alright, and now that we are out of there, we can open the store. I have a key already from killing that one dude and getting his ring, so this will open. You might need a lockpick. But you can go ahead and turn on non-lethal attacks if you don't want to kill anybody. Almost missed it. There we go. And the amulets right there.
And if you want the Soulbreaker Greatsword, you'll need to come to the Captain's Quarters of Krashielek, and you will again have to kill another one of them, Kithrak Therizane here, to get the weapon, so let's go ahead and just do that. Alright, and then whenever she's dead, you can loot the sword right here, and it has an extra get the Yankee interaction. And next up we have Varj Koku's boots, and to get these you'll need to head up to the hatchery part of Krashielek up here. And there will be a guy sort of overlooking this pool, and there's a get the Yankee egg. And he will have the item on his body, so let me go ahead and switch characters and loot that. Can't seem to reach it just yet. There it is, the Varj Koku's boots. And I think you can just knock them out, rather than killing them if you don't want to kill them. And next up we have the Gloves of Belligerent Skies. And to get this one, you just need to go to the top of the Krashielek area, where the Inquisitor's at. And you can get that right here, in this chest. So I'm going to go ahead and use Darkness. Let's go ahead and grab it. And then I'm going to go out here and read it. And here it is. Next up we have two items that you get from defeating these two in combat. Up here in the top, in the Inquisitor Chamber. I think either way you end up fighting them, just so you know. So go ahead and fight them. And once they're defeated you can loot them right here. There's the Circlet of Psionic Revenge. Also a couple nice little other things here. And then over here you can get from her... ...the Diadem of Arcane Synergy. And there are also four other items inside of this room. Inside the Inquisitor Chamber. And they are the Skin Burster this one here there's one inside of the display case right here the necklace of elemental augmentation next up we have the one here and that is the strange conduit ring And then finally we can go over here in this display case. And get the Horfrost boots. And now we can finally go ahead and pick up our legendary weapon. Here at the top, at the Inquisitor area of Krashielek. Go ahead and take your character that can hit a sturdy object really hard. And that'll break this loose. And now you can turn it. Go ahead and make it face this way. And then turn this one the opposite way. That'll lo open up what that. Secrets might this door be hiding? We can head on down. Has this place escaped my people's notice? Go ahead and break this. this Embarrassing. Proceeding. And go through here. Break this one. And have somebody disarm this trap. And now you can go down over here and shoot this one. And now you can come up here and you'll need your 
crest that we got earlier. This thing here. All I wanted was to get a If you take the weapon without the crest, it blows up the monastery, just so you know. So put the crest in. There's another way you can do this without the crest and still not blow things up, but it's a different way than what I'm going to show. And now we have the weapon. I think it's underneath. Yep, right here. And now that I have fully looted the Githyanki area, I'm going to go ahead and go down to the southwest area right here and head through the mountain pass. If you want the Thermo Arcanic Gloves, you can head to the spot I'm at right now, which is right after I came out of the mountain pass. And there is a group of goblins and a bigger goblin named Kansif. If you kill him, he drops the gloves, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show them to you. And here they are. Next up is the Frost Prince Amulet, and you can find this one just nearby where the goblins were. Right here by the path to Kreshelek. And once I take one step this way, it will and it'll be a fight encounter. And then after that you can loot this chest or during and get the amulet that we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and do the fight. And once they're all dead, you can loot the gilded chest and get your amulet right here. Next up we have the Ring of Shadows and the Ring of Mental Inhibition. And you can get these two rings near the Shadowed Battlefield Waypoint. And this was right after the Goblin area, up this way. There will be a little kid here. Agree to play hide and seek with him and he will go invisible. You need a source of C invisibility. And I got it from the eye that you get from Balo after you save him and, and he puts the eye that gives you invisibility somewhere on there. So once you do that and play the game with him, he'll give you a ring for winning or for losing. You get a ring, the Ring of Shadows, this one right here. And that gives you Pass Without Trace. And then you can go to this chest here and lockpick it. And that will give you the ring of mental inhibition. Next up we have the Hammer Grim Mist Amulet. And if you'd like this one you can jump up here. Where I am now near the shadowed battlefield inside this building and just jumped up on this ledge and then you'll need to lock pick this chest right here it's a 10 DC and here's the amulet and if you want the luminous gloves you can head over to the shadowed battlefield just where we picked up that amulet Right here there'll be a measle ambush, these guys right here. And you can just kill them all, and then jump up here, and loot this. And there they are. Next up we have the Ring of Twilight, and if you'd like to get this ring, you can head over to the Shadowed Battlefield once again. And we'll go to this circular thing here. There's a trap in the front, be careful of that. And then right here, you can lockpick this chest. With pleasure. And in the chest, you'll find the ring. If you want the Ring of Self-Immolation, you can head up to above the Shadowed Battlefield Waypoint, right here in this little 
area right here and you'll get ambushed by a ton of dudes right here and you'll kill them and that's how you get the ring so I'll go ahead and kill them and once the fight's over you can loot the boss and get the ironwood club and then head up this way go ahead and go over here let me exit turn base mode Dark lady shields me. Lock and you'll find the ring of self immolation right here. If you're following along with me, come up to here, right near the last light inn, over in this corner, and take the quest from He Who Was to find the ledger, and then we'll find the ledger later on. And if you want to get yourself the family ring, you can head up to near the last light in, just to the right, right here. And then go over here, and in this crevice, you'll find a perception check for a burrow. You'll need to pass it. Buried in the dirt. And right here, you'll find the family ring. And if you want the penumbral armor, you can head over to the last light in and just on the right hand side you can hop a little gap right here and that's where I'm at now and then head over here to this house this house is extra cursed so you will take damage inside of it so just take your best lock picker and then head in and the chest right here is the one we need to lock pick And inside this chest will be the penumbra armor. And next up we have the vendor in the last light inn, right near the waypoint, quartermaster tally. We're gonna check out and see what she has. You're all right by You're all right by For me, she has the shield of devotion. And the incandescent staff. Amulet of the Harpers. Cinder Snap Gloves. Gloves of Balanced Hands. The Obsidian Laced Robe. Mighty Cloth. One T scale mail. Shade clinger armor. Bark skin armor. Hat of unhibited Kushigo. Defender great axe. And I think that might be it. Actually, we got the Cloak of Protection, the first cloak. At least that I've seen, anyway. And that's how you get those ones. And the next trader in Last Light is Damon right here. And he's a blacksmith, Need so he should have some items for us. Looks like he has the Sword of Life Stealing. The Swordmaster Gloves. See anything else? Dark fire short bow. Harmonium halberd. Charge bound warhammer. Thermodynamo axe. Sword of clutching umbra. The Thorn Blade. Let's 
see if there's any green ones. The safeguard shield, I believe I did that in the first video. And I think that might be it. Yep, looks like that's it. And if you've been following along with me, there are three items you can get here at Damon as well. But you need to use the infernal metals that you use on Carlock. I don't plan on having Carlock in my party, so I'm gonna get the three items. Can't sleep. Again, you so might want to use them on her instead. Go ahead and me. say I found the metal in the Grimforge. And that gives us the armor. And there's two more after this. Can't sleep. And one more. Can't sleep. And there's also Orthon explosives you can get here if you have the Devil Foil masks from the Grim Forge. Can't sleep. So you see something that's already fabricated. I only have three of the four, so here's the Orthon explosives. And that's how you get these items. If you want the snowburst ring, you can head to the Last Light Inn and inside the inn, in the main room, head back this way. Through this door. And you'll need to pass the perception check right here. And in this loose plank, you'll find the snowburst ring. If you want the Ripping Force mail, head to where I am right now, and the last light in. And then at the blacksmith area, you'll head up to the second level. And look for a chest. Here's one back here. Go ahead and lockpick. And here is the Rippling Force mail. If you want either the Coruscation Ring or the Covert Cowl, you can head to the Last Light Inn and then head to the under part of it, underneath, and then go down into the cellar here. Then head over to this side. And I'm going to go ahead and lockpick this. It's a pretty hard lockpick. It's a 20 DC. Easy. Or 18, rather. Then I'm going to take my character that has a form of force, move these barrels out of the way, boxes, and then break this cracked wall here. through here and have somebody lockpick this door come out here there'll be a chest here this one's trapped so you'll need to disarm a trap pass a perception check for it how considerate And then you'll need to lockpick it. And that'll get us the Coruscation Ring. And then we can go through here, and then there'll be a fight. There'll be a bunch of enemies. They weren't too hard. And then once they're all defeated, you can loot them, and then one of them should have the item we're looking for, the Covert Cow. Next up we have the Shield of Scorching Reprisal, and to get this shield, all you need to do is head to the Last Light Inn, and then head up to the northern part of it, and we're going to cross this bridge, 
There are blast mines on it, so disarm them. I just ran into them. Subtle Go through here. Rather a rustic burial. But you'll need to pass a perception check for this little rubble pile. That and then you'll need a character with high strength to clear it. Fist. And on the dead flaming fist, you'll find she the shield of scorching clearly. reprisal. So I just finished massacring the entire last light in and area. And I looted everybody, and the only people that had unique loot in the entire camp were Jehera and the Alfira over here. So I'll loot this and show you the unique harp. This unique loot. And then here is the Sylvan Scimitar that she drops, but she becomes a playable character. At some point you can recruit in your party, so I don't recommend killing her, and you'll probably get the sword by recruiting her, so probably don't kill her. Next up we have the Shifting Corpus Ring. And to get this ring, all you need to do is head to the last light, and then progress the quest line, and head up to the top. First you'll need to talk to her, go through her dialogue, and then head up here. Talk to the Moon Woman. Progress her dialogue. Eventually some guy's gonna show up and attack and we're gonna have to fight him and kill him and he will drop the ring that we're looking for. And once he's dead, you can loot his body and pick up the Shifting Corpus ring. Which gives invisibility and blur, and then you can also get a great club plus one. And for those of you that are following along with me, I'm going to take the Harpers, and they're going to give me entry to the this part of the map. And if you were following me along and took the Harpers over to this spot here, when you kill the Karnis NPC, he drops the Cruel Sting sword. And he also drops this lantern that we will use for the quest. And if you want the Gloom Strand Shield, you can head to the very southern part of the map down here. And right here is going to be a chest. And you'll need to lockpick it. And then once you do that, you'll find the shield right here. Next up we have Twist of Fortune, and if you want that one you need to come over to the tool house. And this was after we looted the shield down here, you can head up the bridge. And then once you come over this way on the second floor of the tool house, there will be an enemy called Garingoth Thorm. It will have golden armor, and the trick to shedding that armor is to kill all these floating heads. So kill them all and all the armor will fall off. Then it'll have four health, and then you can one-shot it. And then once you do that, you'll find the Twist of Fortune. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ability. Next up we have the Iron Vine Shield. You can get the shield over at the Toll House once again, near Wraithwind Town or Shadowed Battlefield. And in the top floor, after that gold boss inside this room, in this chest here, you'll find the Iron Vine Shield. And while you're here, you can check for the Gloves of Battle Mage's power in this opulent chest right here in the Tool House. It's not here for me, but online resources say that there should be gloves here, so I don't know if my game's just bugged out. Might be worth checking. If you want the Fireheart Amulet in the Toll House as well, near Wraithwind Town and the Shadowed Battlefield, come to the second floor of the Toll House, so go up these, this uh, staircase here. There will be vines in front of this, so you'll need a strong hitting character. I just used Lizelle with the two-hander. 
smash the vines down and walked in. Looks like there's a way you can just jump through here as well. And then you have to lockpick this chest. I've already done it. And then you loot it. And there's the Fireheart Amulet. And if you're following along with me, I'm going to make my way down through here, jump over here and tell them I'm siding with the Absolute. Then I'm going to make my way into the prison in the lower levels, help the Deep Gnome and the Tieflings escape, and then kill the Warden, get three items in there. And then I'm going to make my way up into the Absolute camp area, check some vendors, and then grab several items upstairs. And next up there are some things you can get in the Moonrise Tower prison. So go ahead and head over to the prison. You can get over here by going down this way from the toll house through here, jumping over, and then going through this door. And then once you're in the prison, you can just side with the absolute guys and pretend like you're on their side. There will be trapped tieflings and trapped deep gnomes over here. Talk to the deep gnomes, give them a weapon they can use to break the wall, then defend them till they escape, and then kill the warden of this place. So the warden will be over in here. I happen to kill her upstairs where all the items are. So first of all, the warden will have the, let's see, the Spellcrux Amulet. And then over here on this table is Warbrin, Walbrin's Hammer. It's not too crazy, but it is unique. And then over here, I think it's either here or here, is the Browbeaten Circlet. And now I'm going to check Roa Moonglow again here in the Absolutes area. And let's just see what she has now. I, from what I could Ever tell, she had surface. about eight new items. The first one is the Sharpened Snare Curious. Then there's the Gloves of Crushing. The Armor of Devotion. And then I believe there's one more here. The Dark Throat Glaive. Drake Throat Glaive, rather. And I believe I showed this one in my Act 1 video. This one's the Near Misser. And I showed this one in Act 1. The Poisoner's Ring's new. And the Ring of Spiteful Thunder. The Marksmanship Hat. And I think that might be it. Bow of Awareness was Act 1. Hunter's Dagger was also Act 1. And yeah, that looks like it was all. And right next to the Roa Moonglow NPC we just talked to in the Absolute Camp, we can now go up and talk to Lantarv. You see what he arms. has. I seek a warrior and for me, he has the Halberd of Vigilance, the Gloves of the Duelist, Sentinel Shield. Enraging Heart Garb. Fistbreaker Helmet. Big Boy's Chew Toy. Titan String Bow. Slicing Short Sword. And it looks like that's it for the blue ones. Let's check green. And that's it here. 
This isn't a piece of gear, but it's a pretty nice potion that lets you permanently increase your strength by two. And how I got it was speaking to this NPC here, Araj Obladra, or however you say that, over here in the corner under the toll house where the absolute people are. Right here. And I had a Starion in my party. He's a vampire, and she wanted him to bite her so she could be a vampire, and I convinced him to do it. And in return, I got this plus two strength permanent potion. So I figured I'd point it out to you guys. And then she's also a vendor, so go ahead and check Welcome her out. Back, true soul. See what she's got. Looks like she has the circlet of hunting. This toxin here, I'm not sure if you can get that anywhere else. The boots of arcane bolstering. The risky ring. The ring of free action. Ring of exquisite focus. Or a robe, rather. The graceful cloth. The Thunderskin Cloak. The Hat of Storm Scion's Power. And I think that's it. Next up in Moonrise Towers on the main floor. Over this way. We can head up to the second level. Make our way this way. There will be a scrying eye in here. I already killed it. Go ahead and kill that. It's just by itself. This door will need to be lockpicked. I've already lockpicked it. Then come over here, lockpick this chest once again. And take the cloak right here. Next up, upstairs. Here in the absolute area. This is in that room with all the gore in it. You can go over this way. And then this door here will be the 30 DC lockpick. So if you can't get through it, I believe you can jump up here and then get in this way. Once you're inside, there's going to be a undead dog. Deal with it however you'd like to. And then inside of this lockpick chest, we will find the item we're looking for. The Cloak of Elemental Absorption. And next up in Balthazar's room, up here in Moonrise Towers, there is a secret door here. So go ahead and click this protruding book. No I already use. did it, so it's, it's already not. done. It'll say click for you. Grab a heart. Bring the heart over to the ancient altar. Stick it in there. The door will open. If Gale is in your party, you can destroy this and get a, bo a bonus to your concentration checks later. Or you can craft a moon lantern with the dead with pixie, or any of these broken moon lanterns. So where did that magic come from? But I already have one, so go over to the opulent chest over here and loot the hat we're looking for, but I'm going to go ahead and lockpick it. And here is the cold brim hat. And now that we have the upstairs fully looted here in Moonrise Towers, you can go ahead and talk to Disciple Zarel. General Thorm's prayers and even you, Disciple. Excellent timing, true soul. The goblin. No, how I see you like to handle underlings physically. Like she Every emotion soaks into her mind's palate. But there Let's is. Let's go ahead and try to pass these. Exploration. She gave me everything I wanted. Show me the powers. Play along. The closer you can get to the general, the closer you'll be to the answers you seek. There I is live a, to serve. We have lost contact with him. 
Go there. Aid Balthazar if you can. And bring the relic home. It is something that General Thor... She Ask her about nervous. the artifact. She'll get Moment. nervous. Persuade Talking her. About the relic makes it's gonna be a anxious. hard one. I failed. I'm gonna try to use inspiration. And that'll be a 19. So I pass. And now that she's nervous General about Thor the relic... Not leave Moonrise without it. You should be giving me more support, this one here. Fine. Talk to the bugbear quartermaster. And now downstairs, the bugbear will offer us some extra you. items, and I'll just warp over there and show you what they are. And this is what he gives you when you hand in the private stash. Took a liking to you, did she? Watch yourself. She breaks Let's see if anything's new. I think these are new. The gauntlets of surging accuracy. Those aren't. This might be new here. That's not new. That's not new. I believe those two items were it. Oh, render of mind and body. That's new. Okay, so we got the gauntlets of surging accuracy. Dwarven Splint Mail and the Render of Mind and Body. And if you want the Rat Bat, the Icarus Gloves, or the Punch Drunk Bastard, you can head to right over here at the Waning Moon near the Moonrise Towers. And just go down into the basement of the bar. Speak to Thizabald Thorm here. What I did was pass several checks and then eventually he drank himself to death and gave me some useful information. I picked up a key off his body and then I will use that key to open the store here in a second after I pick up the rat bat that's actually just sitting right here. It's a pretty simple weapon. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the key to open the store. You can head up this way and then lockpick this chest here. Let me switch to my lockpicker. And there's the Icarus gloves. And then you can go over here talk to these research notes. I'm going to skip the dialogue. Unfortunately, but you can do an investigation check and if you pass it, it's a tough one. If you pass it, you learn a recipe. The Thizzabold's Brewed Up Belly Glimmer. Then you can go over here and I believe there's another recipe over here somewhere. Serpent Fang Toxin. Let's see. It might be inside this chest. I'll be trying to Yep, it's alongside the punch drunk bastard sitting right here. I'll go ahead and read it so you can you can see which recipe it is. The serpent fang toxin. And for those of you that are following along with me, we can go ahead and grab a quest item for the quest that we picked up earlier from this guy up here. And you can grab it here at the waning moon near the moonrise towers. There will be a perception check for a loose floorboard, and you can find the ledger here. And I will go ahead and take the ledger back up to this guy up here. And now that we're back at he who was, you can go ahead and talk to him. Actually, I'm going to talk to him as Shadowheart. And you can yeah. say, here, take it. And you will be the judge. Let's hear what she has to say. Let's do two. The dark justicia promised. Two. She, she, she never said stop. Two. I do anything to take it back. You have to torture anything. her, or he won't give you the quest you item. Just so you know. If, if you try to backstab him, he'll attack you, and you can't get the gloves off his body. And also, I made him try to stab himself in the stomach repeatedly, and I didn't get anything that way either. But here are the gloves. 
the Raven's Gloves. And this lets you summon something. Next up we have the Ritual Dagger of Shar. If you want to get that, you can head up to Moonrise Towers. And then go up a little bit. There's going to be this little area right here with a bunch of shadow enemies. Go ahead and kill them all. And then after you're done, there will be several plaques that are actually buttons. And you'll need to press them in a specific order to open the door. So hit this one on the back. And this is on the other side where, the door, where there's no plaque. Hit that one and then have your other character hit this one. And then hit this one as the final one. What did that do? And that will make the door open up. Strange. Can't feel the shadow curse down here. And then you can come down this way. And I'm gonna have Shadow Heart, since she is all does all that char and stuff. Come talk to these plaques here. Do you accept Shah's do you feel and that gave me a buff for plus five intelligence till I rest. There's one here. Are you bold of comp? And that gave plus five charisma. Do you think you a war? And that one gave us plus five bonus to wisdom, and then open this door. And inside of here, you'll find the dagger. An altar to shop. Go ahead and pick it up, and then that will be a trap, actually, if you pick it up. And then you can kill kill these guys and take the dagger and leave, but killing them doesn't give any loot, so I'll go ahead and show you the dagger. And here is the ritual dagger of Shar. If you want an Infernal Iron and the Helmet of Arcane Acuity, you can come to the Mason's Guild here above Wraithwind Town. And about inside-ish, sort of outside actually, you can come over here and grab the Infernal Iron off the table. And then back in here, there will be a hatch. And this will uncover the basement. Go ahead and make your way up through. There will be a door right here that you'll need to find by finding this button right here, Keyold Herald. And then just um, lockpick that and that'll let you in. This is a trap chest with nothing inside of it. Once you get inside this room, there's going to be a bunch of shadows you have to fight. I've already killed them. And then you can come all the way back here, and there will be a gilded chest. And I'm going to go ahead and lockpick this. Trap. It's trapped, so I'm going to go ahead and disarm that. Use my inspiration to hopefully not fail again. Oh. Third time's a charm. And now we can lockpick that. And that's how you get the Helmet of Arcane Acuity. If you'd like True Love's Caress, the Boots of Apparent Death, or the Ice Bites Robe, you can head up this way, up here, near the Mason's Guild, and Wraithwind Town. And you'll need to pass a perception check, and it'll show you the skeleton, and that's how you'll get True Love's Caress here. And then once you have that, you can make your way over here and lockpick this. Let me get a Starion over here.
Inside of here, you will find the boots. And then you can come up this way. And right here, you'll find the ice bite rope. And next up we have the Hrachnir Bracers and the Psionic Ward Armor. If you want to get those, you'll also need to go near Moonrise Towers. And then go to the west over here. And then you'll get ambushed by Githyanki. Onward, then. From atop this bridge. And right here. And once you finish killing all of these Githyanki, the boss one right here will drop the items we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and skip to that. And once the Githyanki ambush is defeated, you can loot the boss. I happen to kill her up here. And get the psionic ward armor. As well as the Hrachnir bracers, if I said that right. Next up we have the Watcher's Shield and the Assassin Short Sword. And if you want either of these, you'll need to head up to about near the Grand Mausoleum Waypoint. You might not have that one yet, but next to the House of Healing. Just sort of take the path out this way. Come back up through here. And right here, you can go up and over this way. An efficient path. And then over here you'll find two skeletons that each have an item. This one has the Watcher's Shield. And the next one has the Assassin Short Sword. There are three items you can get in the House of Healing before interacting with the guy in the middle there. And to get the first one, go ahead and head down over here. And on this skeleton near Sister Senda, you will find a ring, the True Love's Embrace ring. And then you can head back up to the elevator here. Actually, before you go there, go over here to this crate and grab another item I almost forgot. the Shars Temptation Necklace. That's good. And then we can go up to the elevator. I pickpocketed a key off Sister Senda to use for the door up here. But you can also just lockpick the door. Go ahead and go through here. Head out the back. And path to right here. And I'm just going to jump down to here. Open this door up. <laughs> Easy. And you'll find the Poisoner's Gloves right here in this chest. Next up we have four unique weapons, an amulet, and a loot, and to get these you can come to the House of Healing once again. And we're going to go talk to the middle guy in the middle room, the weird guy. And I'm going to convince him to get attacked by them and, and killed. Come, step but down. you can always do this the old fashioned way and just attack him. I'm going to go ahead and use an inspiration for this. And they killed him. And now I can loot him for the Surgeon Subjugation Amulet. As well as the Battered Loot. And now I'm going to go ahead and kill the rest of the sisters here and show you what weapons they have. And now that all of the sisters are dead, 
here are the weapons you can get. The Artificial Leech, which gives you the Hand Me My Leech class action, as well as the Bloodletting ability. And then we have Bone Saw. Next up, Syringe. And the Tray Pan, I think that's how that's pronounced. There are four items you can get over this way. The Strange Tendril Amulet, the Furzu's Ring of Trading, the Eversight Ring, and Bided Time. And to get that, you'll come over to the Morgue near the Wraithwind Town or Moonrise Towers. And then you'll head up through here. And when you get to the Morgue, you can go ahead and just enter. And I'll show you how to get the four items I mentioned. Once you come inside, just go ahead and open this door and then walk over here. You'll need to pass the perception check for a button. Something over there. And in here in this chest you will find the strange tendril amulet. And then over here in one of these crates or bodies, you'll find the Furzu's Ring of Trading. And then we can go over here, and when you enter this room, there will be zombies that will attack you. And the trick to killing them is you need to do a critical hit or radiant damage to finish them off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll skip to the part where they're dead. And once they're all defeated, you can go to the middle of the room and hit this double door. Go up here and there'll be a chest. Go ahead and lockpick it. There is quest related stuff here. Or not quest related, but lore related if you want some lore. And then you can go up here now that you have the key off the body that I forgot to loot. I'm just going to lockpick the door. There's a body in there. Pick up that key. Touch. Then go over to this corner. This chest will be trapped, so you're going to have to disarm it. And let's just try to open it up and see what happens. There's the Eversight ring. And also in the morgue, after you finish looting those four items, you can head over to the other middle door on the other side, and then head through, and by pulling this lever, it'll open the door. And then you can come down here, and you'll need a character with really good jumping. You can use Elixirs of Vaulting or the Ring of Jumping that I showed in the first video, or get the Yankee Jump, or Misty Step. I think Misty Step might make it, but you need to get over here. And the Cape, the Flesh Melter Cloak, is right here. And then you can jump. Come up this way, and when you leave this ominous crevice, there will be a big fight between you and like maybe 15 of those fish people that you found in Act 1. These guys. And once you kill the chief, you can get yourself the lightning jabber.
And now we can go ahead and enter the Thorm Mausoleum up here by the Grand Mausoleum Waypoint. And this is at the very top left side of the map. And the first item in the Grand Mausoleum, right when you come in, you can come over here to this chest. And there will be a cloak called the Vivacious Cloak. You will have to lockpick this, but I've already done that. And I figured I'd tell you guys how to get past this puzzle that's in the room that leads to the next area. It's pretty easy. Just uh, avoid all the traps in the room or disarm them. And then click the button here for Moonrise Towers painting. Go over here. There's one that's labeled Grief. Click that. And then you can go up here and then click this one and that'll be the right order to open the door. And next up in the Grand Mausoleum, we have the Least Expected, and to get this one, you just need to solve the puzzle that's in the next room after the room one we just did. And to solve the puzzle, you need to go to each corner, lower the lights, and turn them all off, and then you can sort of see where you're supposed to walk. Hit this thing, open the door, and then come over here. Once you get in here, there will be a fight. You can persuade these guys to help you if you want. That's what I did. And then over here will be a chest with the least expected bow inside. Next up in the Grand Mausoleum we have the Dark Justicia Gauntlets and the Hellfire Crossbow. And to get these two you'll need to come to the top right of it. Just as after you did the little undead fight right here. I just went up this way, jumped over right here, and then I jumped over here again, and then that brought me up out here, which let me have sort of an upper hand on the ambush that was waiting for me above. So if you don't want to get ambushed, you can go up that way. Otherwise, you can just walk through the front door. And then once you walk through the front door, grab the gauntlets right here. And then we can come up this way. And there's also about 10 Merrigan Halberds, if you want more of them. But if you loot the boss, you can get the very rare Hellfire Hand Crossbow. And then right after picking up the crossbow and Merrigan Halberds and the unusual purple gem that was there. We can now head over to this way, over here, and that'll lead us to the Boots of Brilliance. So let's go ahead and jump. And you'll find the Boots of Brilliance just sitting in the chest back here. And now after you've looted the Boots of Brilliance, here at the top right of the Grand Mausoleum, you can go over to this corner right here and jump over. Make your way down through here. Jump down to here. Over here. Climb down this cragged rock. Go over here. Jump to here. And then climb down this cragged rock. And there will be a bunch of rats down here. Go ahead and fight them. Eventually when you when you kill enough rats it will turn into a dark justicier. And then you will kill him and then that's how you get the two items. And now that you have killed enough rats to turn them back into a human. Doesn't matter what you say. Even if you apologize, he's still going to attack you, so go ahead and attack him anyway. If you apologize, Shadowheart gets an approval, so just to let you know. And then once he's dead, you can loot his body and get yourself the Justicier Scimitar. And 
and then you can do this one here, the Justicia's Great Shield. Next up we have the Circlet of Bones, and you can get that from killing Balthazar in the Gauntlet of Shar area. Here in the Grand Mausoleum. Over here to the left, when you enter this room, there will be some guys here. Go ahead and kill all the shadow enemies that appear, and then come in here. And you can choose to kill him or not. I'm going to kill him because I want the item. So go ahead and kill him. So to fight. Let us make short work of this. somehow. And once he's defeated, you can go loot his body. And that will be the Circle of Bones. Next up we have the Callous Glow Ring and another Infernal Iron. And you can get this right after getting the Circle of Bones, after killing Balthazar. Near the Gauntlet of Shar. There's a vault here that was a 30 DC lockpick. I don't know where the key's at, there might be a key somewhere. But I just went ahead and lockpicked it. And if you're capable of doing that, you can come in. Go ahead and loot yourself the Kyle's Glow Ring right here. And then right next to it will be the Infernal Iron. And to get the Killer's Sweetheart, as well as two gems to progress the dungeon out, you can head to the very top left of the Gauntlet of Shar and do the Soft Stab Trial, which is where you just stealth through and then go to the end of it. 
And then the self-same trial is where you fight a mirrored party of your own party. They're not too hard, it was pretty easy, but here's the killer sweetheart that dropped after I finished the last one. And they also dropped an umbral gem, and you need two of these. And there is the killer sweetheart ring. I figured I'd throw the solution into the Faith Leap trial downstairs. It's the final trial. I'm gonna go ahead and put my blood in the altar. Make sure you are sorta in the middle right here. And then you can just cross. Come over to about the right side of this. A little bit further and then I'm gonna jump. Go here on this side. Forward just a little further so I can jump. And there's the umbral gem. And next up we have the Dark Justicier Helmet, the Dark Justicier Half Plate, and the Spear of Night. And to get that, it's also in the underneath area where the Faith Leap Trial is you just did. Go down a little bit, and in the next room over, basically, will be the Silent Library. There are a bunch of enemies in here you'll need to kill. And then once you've done that, in one of the bookshelves, I'm not sure which one it was, I don't remember. But you'll find the book, the Night Singer, Teachings of Loss. And then you can come over here and lockpick this. It's a pretty high difficulty class. And then you'll take your book and you'll stick it in this pedestal. What can silence the night song? And that will unlock this door. Oh dear. Someone's left a trap out for us. And there's the Dark Justice here half plate, the Spear of Night. I'm encumbered. And then this back here will be the scared. helmet. Maybe important. Best keep it close. And I'll show you the other two items after this one. And I don't know where the... Here it is. For those of you that are following along with me, I went down into the basement after gathering every umbral orb. And now I'm going to go down into the Shadowfell entrance here because it's saying Party. some stuff about depending on my choices it might change the region so I wanted to let you guys know. Once you get down to the Night Song you'll be tasked with a choice of choosing between Lady Shar or Saluna. Depending on your choice the weapon that you get as a quest reward will be themed based on them. And looks like if you choose to be a moon person instead of a darkness person, you get the Moonlight Glaive. And by choosing Shar over Saluna, she gave me the Dark Justicier Half Plate. the Dark Justicier Boots. The Dark Justicier Gauntlets. And the Shar Sphere of the Evening. And for those of you that are curious which path I chose, I chose the one that was Shar. So I went back to Last Light and got a bunch of free XP. And also looks like if you decided to side with Shar and Isabel dies, you can go to her body and loot the Moon Devotion robe. And then she also has the J Janel's gloves.
And now that I've destroyed the Night Song and sided with Shar, I'm going to head back to Moonrise Towers and assault the tower now. This person is Disciples Rel. They drop a shield called the Absolute's Protector. And I'm going to go ahead and fight them right now and show you the shield. And once you defeat the Disciple Zarel on the bridge, she'll drop you the Absolute's Protector. And she'll also drop an Alithid Parasite. Next up we have the Argument Solver. And to get this one you need to come to the kitchen side, or the bedroom side rather, of the Moonrise Towers. This is after the invasion, after I killed that group, made my way through here. And then I killed Mig here, and she will drop you the Argument Solver. And next up we have the Microlite Scourge, and if you want to get this one you'll need to kill Radija here in Moonlight Towers. And I'm doing this during the invasion, so she's right outside of the ornate door upstairs on the second level with her minions, and then you'll get the Microlite Scourge. And then once you go through the ornate door and fight Kethric, and then he's gone, you can now open this heavy chest here, and you'll get the Ring of Exalted Marrow. And down here in the bottom part of the Illithid colony, after you fight Kethric and jump down in, there will be a brain puzzle. And it's a bit confusing, but you need to connect the sides with the other sides of the same color without overlapping the colors. So if you just sort of pause here and look what I did, and then go ahead and use that. And then once you solve the puzzle, you can head back here and grab the Blade of Oppressed Souls from here. And here is the Blade of Oppressed Souls. And there are two more items you can get on the skeleton next to the blade. Flyzel will move there. There we go. Circlet of Mental Anguish. and the Brain Drain Gloves. And on the right hand side of the colony, finally at the very end of the act we can loot Kethric Thorm for the Kethric's Warhammer. Reaper's Embrace. And the Kethric Shield. And that brings me to the end of the video and the end of Act 2. If you found it useful, leave me a like and consider subscribing because I'll be doing Act 3 sometime in the near future. And yeah, thanks for watching.